thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, yeah, to actually um, explain what, what we have done here in this work, I would, uh, should explain some basics for how the Trojans. Um, first of all, um, just consider a circuit that has malicious changes. Actually, this malicious changes means that it has, does the work. Yeah. Um, uh, that it, this chip or this IC um, adds, uh, this malicious change adds, adds some functionality or removes some functionality of the circuit. Um, or it can lead to uh, changing or reducing the reliability. It means that you have your design, you have your circuit here, and you gave it to the fab, a company, to produce it for you, and then there are some changes in the design that you are not aware of, and it adds some functionality to the circuit. It leaks information, it gives the key out, for instance, or makes the crypto actually very, very simple or big. But you are not aware of this. This um, leads to um, some unpleasant applications, for, liter for instance, military applications, uh, some other applications that may target many more people, or even the device that you have in your pocket. If they are um, trodden infected, it means that they have some functionality that you are not aware of. Um, what about the scenarios, or let's say um, the potential attack vectors? Suppose that um, you just make a design and give it to a factory or foundry, and a malicious foundry or company can introduce a trojan in your design, or even it can be through the malicious employee during the design process or even during the, the manufacturing process. Or you as a company just buy an IP core from another company or from the other person, which actually uh, fulfills all your requirements that you have, for instance, the area, speed, whatever, but it has some other functionality that you are not aware of. Um, or even sometimes uh, can be requested by the government agencies. Um, or it can be done by the attackers, let's say by hacker attackers, for instance, you just have a framework in your system, you want to update the firmware, and then um, if, if the, um, the party that provides the firmware is not trusted, then it might be trojanized, means that the trojan is, is, in, in, is introduced into the firmware. Or even it can be during the shipment. You just buy something from the Amazon, and then during the way, which is shipped to, your, to, the, to the customer, it can be changed, or it can be replaced by some other device that it has trojan inside. Um, but Actually, how the Trojans work, um, usually there are some small changes in the circuit, um, particular point or certain parts of, part, points of the circuit that they can lead to completely break or broken, broken crypto or weakened crypto. For instance, it can um, change the functionality of the system or circuit, and in particular scenarios just leak the key out or make the circuit very or crypto very simple. For instance, instead of the AES, you have just one round of the AES. Yeah? Then uh, it, everything seems random and ev everything seems encrypted, but not, not necessarily. And then you have one round of the AES, it can be easily broken. Um, or it can be changes in the size and leakage of the circuit. For instance, it leaks about the key, uh, in particular uh, scenario, particular fashion. Um, and, but not, not easily through a particular site and uh, particular site channels. Um, but how do we detect such Trojans if you have the functionality testing or even such an evaluation? First of all, what is usually considered in, in um, hardware or Trojan, hardware Trojans uh, community is just comparing the chip with a golden chip. It means that if this is a, it's a bit um, 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 hard assumptions, a strong assumption that you have a chip and also a golden chip. It means that you have a a chip that it might be uh, Trojan infected, another chip that you are definitely sure that there is not Trojan. And then you just compare the characteristic of these, these two devices. Sometimes it's hard to assume that the golden chip is accessible. Um, or you do functional testing, you have your chip, and then you just uh, check it with many test vectors to see whether the functionality is correct if the functionality is altered before. Or you do search and evaluations. You go through a, uh, um, state of the art and standard, uh, standard search and evaluations to see whether the, the circuit is leaking through the search channel or not. Or you do netlist analysis, means that again you have a device, in your hand you do reverse engineering, extract all the netlist and then again compare with the original design that you sent it to the factory uh, to see whether it's changed or not. Actually this is not, it's shown it's not enough. In last, last year chess it has been shown that even, even if the netlist appears to be correct, 
it doesn't mean it not necessarily doesn't have any Trojan inside. It yeah, might be because of the delay of the circuit, the delay is, is altered, and so on. Again, it might be, might be Trojan infected. Um, what, what we are doing here in this work is uh, I'm just showing that how to design a circuit that can pass this Sajnan evaluation. Uh, means that the device uh, seems completely uh, secure and is secure, but under certain condition, it, sh it starts leaking information uh, through again the side channel. Uh, one question is here, it, whether we are actually helping criminals here by just introducing the new ways of Trojans. The answer is that, yeah, uh, might be, but uh, the, you know, we, the tr detection and uh, design of the Trojans are closely related. If we don't know how the, the Trojans can be, can be designed, then we cannot provide uh, protection schemes. We cannot provide the, the, uh, the efficient detection mechanisms. Um, particularly in this works, um, I'm showing that, um, again, um, how, the, um, how one side and parametric Trojan can be inserted in the system. What does a parametric mean? It means that it doesn't leak always, but in particular scenario, a particular condition, it leaks information. In these works, I'm dealing with the high clock frequency. I mean, the device is working absolutely fine without the leakage, and then you just increase the clock frequency and it starts leaking. And then you can exploit the leakage. What makes a work different to the other works and instead of the art side channel hardware trojans is that um, mostly the other works or previous works uh, either target the PRNG because in, in side channel security, in side channel content measures, we usually need source of randomness internal of, or embedded into the system. I mean, you have, we have seen in the last talk um, about uh, masking and the Boolean masking and some source of randomness are, are used. And if the attacker or the Trojan is targeting the PRNG and changing the distribution of this PRNG, and the distribution is not uniform anymore, then, um, then the one attack is possible. Either that such uh, previous works are, are targeting the PRNGs or, uh, or are going to the transistor level manipulation, for instance, changing the dopant um, of the circuit, or um, particularly separate circuit to just leak particular or certain intermediate values, for instance, the key. The point is that none of these schemes, or most of these schemes, cannot um, pass the side channel evaluation it means that if you just have, if you want to get, for instance, certificate of your design and send it to evaluation lab, the evaluation lab with just um, state of the art leakage detection schemes can uh, easily find not done. It, it, the, the lab, the lab cannot easily find that the, the system has Trojan or Trojan infected. It can detect that the system has a leakage. Whether this, this leakage is exploitable or not, this is another question. But the lab cannot say definitely that this device doesn't have any leakage. As I said, our, our goal here is to, um, to, say, to see how we can add such a Trojan into a system that system <coughs> stays still secure, but uh, becomes insecure in, in particular condition. To explain that, um, I need to go through masking in hardware a bit. Um, I can explain that, that it's after several heuristics and ad hoc mechanism that we had for the masking the schemes in hardware, finally we had the threshold implementation, in, in short we call it TI, which can provide provable security against first order attacks, in hardware particularly. And it's, it's a mixture of Boolean masking that we have seen in the last talk, and also multi-particle computation. Um, you know, the, because, because we have Boolean masking and we have seen the Boolean masking in the last talk, it means that you just have x and represent the x by some shares in the beta that you x or the shares, you get the value x. And if you want to apply one linear function over this mask, easily you just apply the linear function over each share separately and then you are done. You know? This is simple. But the challenge, of course, is the nonlinear functions. I mean, if you, have, you want to apply nonlinear functions over some shares that they are in Boolean sharing. A Boolean mask. Um, this is actually the place that TI is, is plays, plays a role and, and say that um, I have some requirements um, how to implement a mask in hardware um, to be able to uh, provably say that this, this, this is our doesn't leak information through the first or the side channel indications. Suppose that you have the box that the input is x, output is y, and then you want to represent this box by some other functions that when x is shared in three shares minimum, and y also the output of this box is also shared in three shares, 
and these are small functions, uh, we call it component functions, each of them provide one output share. One of the requirements this is tra uh, straightforward. Trivial is this the correctness means that if you XOR this X, uh, all the shares of the X, you get X, and here if you XOR all the Y's, you should get Y. Yeah, this is the trivial. But non completeness says that if you have here um, each of these component functions, each of them should be independent of one share. For instance, you can see F1 <coughs> is independent of X1, F2 doesn't receive X2, and F3 doesn't receive X3. But what does it mean? It means that the leakage of F1 will be independent of X1 and then independent of X, and also leakage of F2 and the same for F3, and then it means that in, in average, the leakage of this circuit will be independent of X. Yeah? But in average, I mean, this is the meaning of the first or the security. But the third property is the uniformity. To understand the uniformity, I should explain it. As I said, we have a PRNG usually in, in, um, or a source of randomness in the circuit. Um, and then uh, it provides the random values to share, for instance, this x. And then it should follow a uniform distribution, I mean the, the mass. And then uniformity property of the TI says that if the input is, is a uniform sharing a particular x, for instance, then the output should be also a uniform, uniform sharing of, of all possible sharing value of the y. It means that actually this applying that is f1, f2, f3, doesn't change the uniformity or distribution of the masks. Um, not, fooling, uh, not fulfilling any of these uh, conditions, of course, and non-completeness and uniformity, uh, um, you cannot guarantee that the system is secure against first order effects. Achieving correctness, as I said, is super easy, even trivial. Non-completeness can be also achieved easily, I will said, explain in the next slide, but the uniformity is a problem, you know, we have to check a lot of things to finally um, find by trial and error whether the circuit is, is uniform or not. To explain that, I need to again explain some other one, one, more, one more concept which is called Dirac sharing. I just to start an example, suppose that you have the box um, with four, four, it, four bit input and four bit output, and I have just a small function here as one which gives us the one output width of this box. Yeah? That receives four bit input and one bit output here E one of the bit of the body. And then suppose this is the ANF, algebraic normal form of the one bit of the S box, this E, and then two linear components and one quantity component, and then you just replace A with the sharing of the A, A1, X or A2, X or A3, the same for B, C, and D. Just write the formula and then expand it, and then finally you have some linear components and quantity components. And then the, the idea here with the unit <coughs> sharing is that if you have this, again, uh, circuit, the, the point here is that which functions, with which of these components will go to E1, which one to E2, and which one to E3. Yeah, I mean, just separating this and to, or uh, 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 separate this uh, terms in three parts in a way that it fulfills the requirement of the non-completeness. Um, the unit sharing actually follows a particular um, format for the indexing, but what is easy and what to say is that the, uh, the quadratic terms, for instance, B2 and C3, this cannot go to, to E2 because it has 2, it cannot also go to E3 because it has 3, definitely it has to go to E1. That means that these components, these quadratic terms, um, they are clear where to go. Yeah? We don't have any other terms. But the other components that we have, other terms, um, either the linear ones or the quadratic ones that they have the same index, they are arbitrary can go to two different functions. For instance, A2 can go to E1 and also to E3. And then they are actually not changing the functionality of the system, but they have effect on the uniformity. It means that if by changing this, by putting A2 to E1 or E3, it changes the uniformity. It means that if the circuit might be uniform, or if it's uniform, it might be not uniform by after change. But this is not the end of the story. You can add more terms, even the terms that they do not exist. For instance, you add B2, add E1, and also E3. It doesn't change the, the functionality, because if they are X or of them, again, B2 is canceled. But again, this change, changes the uniformity. The same for some other particular quadratic terms, that they are actually called correction terms. These are called correction terms, because we just add them to achieve the uniformity. Now. Suppose that you made your circuit like this. This is the all three component function, and then one correction terms, which both of them are receiving, I mean, getting the input from x2, 
This is the same component function, just, just to achieve the uniformity. Without this C, this circuit is not uniform. Just suppose this. And then what happens if, uh, if this correction term uh, is the last coming signal? It means that the, the circuit which is uh, realizing this, com this, uh, this correction term is actually the slowest, the slowest component in this critical path. In the, if you have a register here, the start and register at the output, the time which happens till the, this uh, output of the uh, correction term is ready. If, if intentionally we make it a slow, this just component from the, 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 the correction terms, it, this will be the result. Suppose that this is the clock, and the clock uh, period or frequency is still um, slower, or sh uh, slower or the clock period is longer than the critical path delay means that the time is required from uh, all of these values from x1, x2, x3 to generate y1, y2, y3. And then the circuit will be fault free, no problem at all, the circuit works absolutely fine. But, uh, and also it's uniform, means that it should be secure against first order attacks. You just decrease the clock frequency in a way that it, uh, the critical path delay of the correction terms are violated, means that they are not um, performing correctly, um, at, um, or they are not evaluated correctly. Uh, but it's, the circuit becomes unstable, sometimes it's working correctly, sometimes not, because uh, you cannot say that how, uh, many, how many nanoseconds per second your circuit completely need, needs. And then you, if you decrease again the clock frequency, means that the, um, the delay of these two correction terms are completely violated, they are ne never they are ready uh, or correctly evaluated. But the delay of these component functions are not evaluated, uh, are not violated, means that they are uh, evaluated correctly here. It means that the circuit will be fault free, means that it's, it, the circuit works like this, that the, these correction terms do not exist in this, in this design. And then what happens, the circuit is still is correct, because the XOR of them is still actually correct, but it's not uniform anymore, because the correction terms are not added to the system. And if you again decrease the clock, uh, period or increase the clock frequency, then the circuit will not work correctly because the delay of these component functions will be violated. And this is actually the place that we want to inject the short term. It means that if we intentionally make this circuit, part of the circuit longer or this circuit is slower, then we already injected or trojan into the system. But how it's complicated? How, to, how can we make this part of the circuit um, slower? As a case of study, we have the present present cipher in the threshold implementation minimum with three shares. The Spox is implemented in two steps, and decomposed in two parts, G and F, because it's, uh, a Spox is a cubic function, now we decompose it to two quadratic functions. And now we target the G function, the first part of the Spox, and then put the old throat up here, uh, by just making the component func the, the correction terms uh, slower in the whole of the circuit. Um, we target first and one FPJ prototype, the Spartan 6, is a Sakura G board, which is also used for such an evaluation um, in practice. Um, one option in FPGA is uh, to, make the, uh, to make the delay, uh, to make introduce delay is uh, um, to make particular um, logic slow, is to pass the particular routing through, um, through um, switch boxes. Because the switch boxes in the feature are active elements, and then it's just by changing the routing, they go through more active elements and they become a slower. But how can we do this? We have a video here. I hope it's played. Uh, this is um, just a full of the view of the FPJ. You just need to select the correction term via here. Um, you just uh, find the correct name of your design, and then you see here it's selected. Yeah, we turn off the other signals, and these two lines are the co uh, correction test actually in the uh, in the FPGA, and then you just need to um, select that that one that you want, and then unroute it. Yeah, first of all, we get a delay of this signal, which is already routed. You see, it's 0.8 nanoseconds here. Actually, it's 0.9 nanosecond. This delay of this, and then you just unroute it. Just some commands here, unroute, and then. Uh, just select another area, um, but you can see here, one part of the circuit will be selected here. Takes a bit of time. Yep, 
you know, just select one area which is not used, you will see, for it says here, we select one part which is not used, and ask the, uh, the router here to use definitely one of the wires which are there for the routing. For instance, we select this, this line, you will see now, we select one of the lines here and say the routing should pass through this particular line. And here we take again root, by selecting this we say again root, you see it's the rooted, now we turn off all the other signals that are not necessary. And now you see the circuit now is routed through this particular line that we want and then coming back. And if you get the delay of this, you get this now 5 to point nanoseconds instead of 0.9 nanoseconds. Yeah? And then you are done with just um, changing the routing. And the point here is in the FPGA, it doesn't consume any resources. I mean resources with respect to the slices, the flip-flops, and also the loops. And then if you compare your original design with the Trojan infected design, there is no difference in the, in the um, um, utilization and the resource utilizations. For instance here, the original design has uh, those many flip-flops and loops and the slices, and then the critical path today says that the maximum clock frequency is two, uh, 219 megahertz, and just by changing the routing through the switch boxes, you see that the utilization ex stays exactly the same by just changing the routing. And then, but the circuit works like this, that the maximum clock frequency will be 196, but in the gray area where the circuit is unstable, 212 megahertz up to 219 megahertz. It means that if we run the circuit at this area, the, in the yellow one, then the circuit um, uh, should actually leak information in the first order. Um, these are the um, practical function results um, at 168 megahertz because we are in the green part, the circuit should be secure, simple power trace. You can see how long does it take from here to here, some microseconds. And then 100 million traces and then these are the results of the, actually the T-test, the common uh, leakage detection schemes, fixed versus random. The first order over the number of traces and also over the time, it doesn't leak through all three components, three, uh, three orders. Actually, the reason is that we have uh, some node generator in the system to, um, to hide higher order leakage because the TI that we have is only first order second. And now we run the system at the 216 megahertz, which actually we are in the yellow part. Now the circuit, uh, one simple power trace is a string, it's a small, shorter, and then again 100 million traces and then it starts leaking after two min, uh, 20 million traces, yeah, and then the first order, and then um, this actually detects the leakage, it means that the, the, there is a leakage to exploit, a detectable leakage it might be exploitable. We have some attacks also in, this, in, in, in the paper, that it shows that it's actually proof of concept that the attack is, that this leakage is, is exploitable. This is my last, last slide. Um, there might be some rising questions about this work. For instance, how about the ASICs? This is for the FPGA. Whether it's possible on ASIC or not, yeah, it's possible by changing the transistor characteristics. For instance, you can replace the gates of the system by their high, um, high threshold variance, means that the, the gates uh, are becoming the slower. And then, again, you can, it can have um, actually effect on the, um, on the delay of the particular lines. <laughs> we already fabricated two chips, 19 nanometer and 65 nanometer chips. <coughs> With these Trojans um, infected designs, they are still under evaluation. Um, what are the scenarios, possible scenarios for this, this Trojan? Um, you can think about the third IP cores and also manufacturers uh, that the malicious design maximum frequency is 196. I mean, the device is sold by this, or the IP cores says maximum clock frequency is 196. Of course, you don't see the gray and, and, and the yellow part in the specification. And then it will never be evaluated by the Sargent lab at a frequency higher than 190, um, 197 megahertz. And then uh, because, it's just the, because the circuit will not function correctly. And then, but the Trojan adversary can run it at higher frequency, for instance 216 megahertz, and then explode the leakage. Now this was the point how the, um, the scenario of the attack is. Um, the last question or last criticism is that um, we need to control over the clock. Whether the clock control over the clock is a realistic scenario or not. Uh, in FPGAs, usually it is because uh, usually it's, it's externally clocked. 
and then internally it's use the PLL or DCM to increase the frequency multiplied by a particular uh, certain value. Usually it's, it's a realistic uh, assumption in the field, but in ASIC it's commonly, um, um, the clock is commonly um, uh, generated internally in the embedded systems and then um, this cannot be taken into account that the, con that the attacker has the control over the clock. But the same, the same effect can be seen by lowering the power supply. It means that you just decrease the power supply voltage and then the gates start being slower, but as long as the, the clock frequency which is generated internally has the same frequency, you have the same again effect. As a last message, um, um, the overclocking actually, yeah, and then controlling over or uh, monitoring the power supply reduction should be inter internally done to not detect such a Trojan, to just say that uh, if this Trojan is, is inserted, then, um, then it sh we should avoid being it activated. Thank you for your attention. So I'm not familiar with hardware design, but I guess that there must exist some tools some optimizer which can detect that there are some very lengthy and unnecessary problems. So is, is there any way to obfuscate this kind of problem? Yeah, um, I can get back to this slide. I don't play the video completely, but you know, the thing is, um, the whole of this circuit is here, right? And then not necessarily you select a signal which is not used here, but it's middle of the circuit and then um, if you, of course, if you do netlist analysis, you will recognize some routes that they are strange in your system. Yeah? But we are talking about exactly this point, that when you want to buy an IP core from someone else, yeah, then what you should look at, either, either whether you should look at uh, uh, the long, long wires, that they are unnecessary long or not. I mean, this is exactly the point that here in this work, we are saying that what, what we should look at to be able to find such Trojans. But if without knowing this, that the, the Trojan can be inserted by making your routing long, you would never look at uh, the long wires in your in your third party um, IP cores that you buy. Okay. Just a short comment. Um, your Trojan is basically a, a kind of fault attack, and uh, manufacturers of smart cards have. Uh, implemented both uh, overclocking and uh, under voltage protection on the smart card. And in addition, if uh, uh, the circuit is calculating cryptographic encryption, for example, you can easily avoid the fault attacks by trying to decrypt the result before you send it out. Uh, because uh, if uh, you are overclocking, the result will be incorrect. And when you decrypt it, you see that you didn't uh, get uh, the same value that you started with. So there are good protective methods. Yeah, but it, it's this, the functionality is correct in this case. This is the point. Not that overclocking. With overclocking, it will not be correct. Yes, it will be correct. This is the point in your this, this, this design. That, that the correction terms will be cancel each other, will cancel each other, and then it doesn't matter the correction terms are there or not, the functionality of the system is correct because you always receive the correct result if you are in that, gray, uh, that yellow area. If you are here, the system works correctly. This is the point. If you decrypt it again, you again say the, uh, the same thing. Okay. I thought that uh, the correction never uh, reaches all sure, time. Sure. Here, here is correct. Yeah, it's no problem. Here is unstable, and here is this, again the, uh, the result of the function is correct, and here again it will be faulty. But here the result is correct, but the search and leak is not. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Thank you.